Hello. Welcome to 21 Dreams Arts and Culture Artist Talk, Creative Conversations, Who I Am. This program is presented by 21 Dreams Arts and Culture in partnership with the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts and Alabama State University Department of Visual Arts. It is also sponsored by She Agency, Feminist Hot Dog, Alabama State Council for the Arts, and virtualized by Kari Creative. My name is Jacqueline Trimble, and I will be your moderator this afternoon. And the panel artists with us today are Sonny Polk, Tony Tony, and Carol Bandy Carson. Who I Am was a vision of Sonny Polk featuring a collective of women artists in celebration of National Women's History Month. Who I Am is about real people and their real stories, people who demand to be seen, and the daily challenges that presents. It's about reconciling with who the world assumes they are while still being strong enough to be their true self. It's about stepping back and listening to what is unspoken and often hidden from the rest of the world. It's about who they are. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's so great to um, be with you this afternoon and talk about your amazing work. Um, this exhibition is just beautiful, just astonishing. And I think we're going to start this afternoon by talking about that title, Who I Am, which seems to me very, to be very much an answer to a question, who are you? And so I want to begin with that question. Who are you, Tony? Mm. I am, um, I'm a lot of things. Um, I am a, an artist, I'm a creative. Um, in addition to being a, a wife, a mother, a, a sister, daughter, um, educator, um, I am a person that um, draws creativity from everything around me. Um, I'm everything that God created me to be. That's a great answer. That's a great answer. And um, can you talk a little bit about who you are specifically as an artist? Um, specifically as an artist, I think I'm, um, I'm an artist that came into my own later in life, um, actually acknowledging and owning that word artist. Um, being a creative from childhood, um, not really understanding the responsibility behind an artist and having to grow into that title and just being real comfortable identifying as an artist because with that title comes um, a lot of responsibility. Uh, it, it carries a lot. It carries a lot of expectations when you can own that title of, uh, of being an artist. Um, once I acknowledge that that's truly where I am in life, like I'm, I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a creative first because I love to create, but really owing, owning that title as an artist, it, it took a while to do that. So as an artist, I'm comfortable um, using that word freely, mm -hmm. you know, and I think um, a lot of, I'll say creatives, shy away from what comes along with uh, identifying as an artist. Yeah. I, I think that's absolutely true. Let me ask that same question to Carol. Who are you, Carol? Um, I think um, I'm going to probably echo a lot of the same things that Tony just said. Um, first of all, I'm a, a child of God. I am a wife, mother, grandmother, and then I'm an artist. I think um, all of those titles kind of um, influence my work and influence how I operate and how I do my art and how I move in this world. And so, um, and, and like Tony, it took me a very long time to call myself an artist. Actually, someone else had to call me one and he said, you're an artist. And he said, so start saying that you're an artist. And so now I, I wear it bravely. <laughs> I, wear, I wear it and I, um, I introduce myself a lot of times as an artist. 
Very good. And Sonny, this um, exhibition was your brainchild. And so you have obviously been thinking a lot about this question mm. and you have answered it, who I am, but who are you? Tell us who you are. Well, I, I, I have to agree. It, it took a long time for me to be able to say that I was an artist mm -hmm. and, um, and the responsibility that comes with that. But uh, I think that's why uh, the older I get, the, the more I feel secure in who I am. So um, I, I wanted to paint a self-portrait, which I hadn't done in a long time, and sort of rethink about who I am now as opposed to when I was younger. Um, but uh, then I started exploring my, my friends, you know, the, the people that inspire me, wondering who they are, you know, as opposed to how the world sees them or perceives them, um, you know, what, what conflicts with how they feel versus that. But, um, but it's interesting that you said the show is my brainchild because it really wasn't. Um, it, 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 never, it never started off that way. It just it was self-exploration in the beginning and then, mm. like I said, branching out. But after bringing in all these other talented women, it, it, it brought me to another level of who I am. I'm part of an artist community yeah. and part of a, a, an enormously talented bunch of women, you know, that all share this passion and, and you know, drive to create because that's who they are. Mm -hmm. So um, I learned more about myself just from being a part of this project, which was really lovely, I think. <laughs> That, I think that's um, really great, and I think it's evident because your work, all of your work, the works in the show seem to be in conversation with each other, which mm -hmm. I hope we will talk about a little later on. But I would like to introduce the art, the audience now to who you are, uh, according to your bios, because <laughs> um, you are all very modest, <laughs> very modest and very in indeed. Sonny Polk is an award-winning artist and graphic designer born and raised in Montgomery, Alabama. She was a visual arts student at Baldwin Junior High, Carver Creative and Performing Arts Center, and Auburn University, Montgomery. Her outdoor murals in downtown Montgomery have been featured in the New York Times, CNN, NBC, Showtime, NPR.org, Essence, and numerous Alabama media outlets. Recent studio gallery work showings include Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts, City Hall, 21 Dreams Gallery at 540 Clay Street, and Cress on Dexter Avenue. Her clients include the YMCA, the City of Montgomery Public Art Commission, Montgomery Chamber of Commerce, Montgomery Rotary Club, Prevail Union Montgomery, NYC Gyro, Fraser United Methodist Church, Old Cloverdale Association, That's My Child, Flowers Elementary School, Mayor Stephen Reed, and the XQ Super School Project. She was previously employed by the Alabama Shakespeare Festival Scenic Art Department and is currently employed as an in-house graphic designer at Southern Poverty Law Center. Tony Tony is a creative who defines her work as multifaceted, Originally from Compton, California, she focuses primarily on the subject of female and young black girls in the urban environment. Her work has been seen at the Crest Building and at various locations throughout Selma and Montgomery. Tony Tony is a graduate of Troy University where she received a BS in art with a concentration in 2D design. She currently divides her time between creating her own work and teaching visual art to adjudicated youth in Montgomery, Alabama. Carol Bandy Carson, an Opelika, Alabama native, is a visual artist whose work embodies nostalgia and the human experience as it relates to African Americans. Vintage photos detailing the history and lives of people from all demographics are her inspiration. She created seven Jesus paintings that were pictured in a made-for-TV movie Whitewater, filmed in her hometown. Her work can be seen in private and public collections, which includes Alabama State University, along with various television 
and media publications. I think that tells a little bit more about who you are <laughs> since you guys are. As most artists I find, particularly women artists, mm -hmm. are very humble. Um, and yet uh, your talent and your work speaks for itself. So I just hope we will have uh, a fruitful conversation this afternoon about your work. So um, I want to talk a little bit about, um, Sunny, your bringing together of these women artists. You, you sort of have said that this is not your brainchild, but that it sort of developed as you, it developed as you began to look at the work and you began to grow and understand more about yourself based on the work of um, these women. So, um, and part of the design of the show was to in fact bring women artists together and to the forefront. Can you talk a little bit more about what made you do that? What, why you decided to do that? What inspired you? Absolutely, uh, well, Kalanji at 21 Dreams is always my go-to for <laughs> doing art shows because He's so good at them and good, so good at connecting all the pieces to, you know, create these wonderful events. But uh, I started talking to him about doing a show at Alabama State University because I, I just loved the space mm -hmm. in, the, in the gallery. And um, he sort of thought, well, you know, it's Women's History Month. This is the second year in a row I've done a show during Women's History Month. Um, Last year it was all women paintings. This year it was you know men and women. But uh, but he said why don't why don't we do a women's collective show mm -hmm. and that way you know just just have people send in pieces and you know we'll we'll uh, we'll jury it and people started submitting pieces and you know I'm a huge fan of Tony's and Carol's already oh, yeah. so I was thrilled that they submitted work mm -hmm. um, but we wanted it to be all portraits. So all these portraits started coming in. Some were self-portraits, some were not. But I felt like all of them that we selected really told powerful stories mm -hmm. and, and made me want to know more about the pieces mm -hmm. and the artists. So, um, but yeah, just, uh, I, I never usually come up with brilliant ideas on my own. It's usually working <laughs> with other people. So it was really helpful to talk it through with Kalanji and be like, yeah, that would be a really amazing show and it turned out to be even more amazing than I ever dreamed. It, it really is incredibly beautiful, cohesive. I mean, it's like, uh, it's interesting to, to hear you say how things came together. Mm. But I think that um, there's a phenomenon in the art world where there's kind of a, a, a river of thought and even though people don't talk about it, it kind of runs through what's happening where people get on the same, same wavelength. Absolutely. And so I think that's sort of what happens. Mm -hmm. um, Carol, talk about what inspired you to um, enter pieces or to uh, put pieces in this show? Um, I can't remember how I found out about it, but I think I saw it um, initially on the 21 Dreams Instagram. Um, and I never submit work to anything. So I did it, and then I wanted to back out. <laughs> and then I went through with it, and um, I'm very happy um, that I did, because I do really want to get um, more involved with the art scene, and there's not very much in this area, so I'm hoping that it will grow. And so I've um, been very excited and happy that I did do it. Yeah. We're happy to. Absolutely. <laughs> Tony, same question. Um, it's funny that you kind of tied all this that in together. Um, I had been uh, painting on Sundays with Danielle, mm -hmm. Danielle Everly. And she kind of really pushed me to, you know, do a little bit more portraiture. And I love her, her loose style. And I was like, okay, let me go, let me, let me meet with you and, you know, we'll paint together. And, you know, you kind of feed off each other as, as artists do. And so that's how my portraits that I submitted, you know, came for the show. And she was like, you know, Sunny's doing an all-female show with portraits. And I was like, word? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is going to be perfect. She's like, yeah, you know, you should submit the ones that you've been working on. And so that's how they, they entered it. But just the fact that females kind of pull each other up. You know, and like Carol said, you know, it's 
you have to be encouraged. You have to hear about it. You have to know about it. So the collective that we have, you know, through 21 kind of creates that, that situation, you know, whether it's word of mouth or you hear about something outside of Montgomery, you know, and, and that's how you end up submitting for the shows. Um, I, I love the, the whole idea of the all-female show. I love the idea of the portraits. You know, it allows us to show our body mm-hmm. of work. Um, the portraits that I chose for the show are almost like the different personalities that we have. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's what you see on the outside and it's kind of how you feel on the inside. Nice. That's, that's a great way to think about it because that um, all of you sort of said in your answer in one way or another, um, who I am is not one person. Mm-hmm. You all sort of listed different things that you are. So um, this idea that these portraits are different aspects of you, different parts of your personality, I think is um, just absolutely right. So I want to go back to um, some of the touchstones in your bio and to think a little bit about your journey to become an artist. What made you an artist? And I want to start this time with Carol, um, I know you were encouraged by your father and your great grandmother, and um, I would just like to hear how each of you really found your way to art. I mean, um, you know, I work uh, as an academic, and I'm always dismayed that we do not encourage people to engage in the humanities and to become artists. You know, we usually say, you're going to starve you know, become an accountant or yeah. whatever, and just what the world needs, another accountant. <laughs> um, I would rather have another artist. But anyway, <laughs> I'd like to hear your um, path to becoming an artist. Carol, why don't we start with you? Well, my story is a, um, a rocky story. It's not bad. It's just that um, my father noticed that I could draw when I was about four. Um, my mom was in the hospital and I went to his, he was going to junior college and I went to class with him and it was an art class and the teacher, and I remember, and I think I remember because they talked about it so much, you know, because I was just four, but they put up a paper bag and some fruit and shined a light on it and they were supposed to sketch it. Okay. Well, I sketched it and then the teacher told my husband, um, she has a gift because at four years old, I understood light and shadow, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where wow. even the adults were having a hard time. Now, it was a four-year-old drawing, but sure. I drew the light and shadow. And so he always encouraged me um, to draw what I saw mm-hmm. and not to trace. Mm-hmm. And so I always drew, and I was always drawing. I drew on the walls. He let me draw on the walls. Wow. <laughs> um, and then when I got ready to graduate from high school, I told him I wanted to be an artist, and he said he would not pay for college if I did it. Mm-hmm. So I went to Auburn University and changed majors like a hundred times, and um, got married and went back to school, and finished AUM's um, interior design program, and then um, it kind of launched me into doing murals. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how I became. I, I've always been an artist, yes. but. Um, I haven't always felt confident in owning it because it, it was almost like he shot it down. You know, he mm-hmm. wanted me to do it and then he shot it down. It's like, no, it's not good enough. He said, you won't be able to feed yourself. Mm-hmm. He said, do you know any um, wealthy artists? And at the time I didn't know any, you know, and it made a lot of sense for me to try to find a good thing to graduate in and be successful, so. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, but I, I'm, I'm glad that I did. Um, I, I don't think I would have done it had I not married who I married. Mm-hmm. And he kind of, I stayed home and it kind of gave me the freedom to explore my art more and to try it. Um, right before my mom died, um, she asked me, my voice is cracking, um, mm-hmm. to paint um, faces. Mm-hmm. And so I said, well, I don't think I can do that because I did a lot of flowers and stuff like that. And I did two. Um, very stylized portraits before she passed. And so now every time I complete one, I look up and I say, you were right, wow. I can do this. <laughs> That's yeah. a great story. Thank you. <laughs> Sonny? 
Uh, it, it's interesting you said that your, your father said to pay attention to detail because I was somebody that always picked up art materials from a very young age and was drawing, but it was when my father took out an encyclopedia because I used to love drawing horses, but he showed me, you know, well, this is the muscle and this is the, you know, the, how, how, yeah, yeah, yeah. how the horse is formed right. is underneath, you know, and so it really taught me to look at those details. I say encyclopedias, um, those used to be books. That <laughs> <laughs> there was no computer. Yeah, but, let's uh, make sure everyone understands. <laughs> but so, you know, I really started to pay attention to those details, and um, my mother had artist friends that, um, well, Judy Hooks, she, she took me in as a student at a young age, and um, was always very fortunate to be able to attend art lessons, mm -hmm. even though um, my parents were teachers and not very wealthy or, you know, well, not at all, but um, so yeah, I did, and I was fortunate enough that the magnet school started to open as I came of mm -hmm. that age and was able to get into those. Um, so yeah, I just um, have always um, have always been at it. But the the, situ the situation with me was the same. Like there there were no working artists that I knew mm -hmm. that were making a lot of money. <clears throat> and excuse me, and it, frankly. Um, you know, I was I was a little odd when I was growing up, when I was a teenager, you know, a little artsy, you know, sore thumb. But, uh, but it was only when I started to sell my art mm -hmm. that people started to say, oh, she's an artist. Wow. And it's okay that she looks a little different. <laughs> you know, which is now, now it's totally normal, but, um, uh, but it, I, I just, that kind of insulted me, you know, yeah. like I can't be myself unless I'm making yeah. money doing it, you know, yeah. so that's. That, and I hear that commonality because Carol said uh, if she went to college to get a degree in interior design, which is really art, you know, mm -hmm. but it's like quote, quote unquote practical art, that was acceptable. Right. But to say I want to be an artist somehow, I don't know, people don't know what that is. Yeah. How do you make money at that, you know, and so that commonality of not quite understanding, right, um, is interesting. Mm -hmm. And how I to hear it a lot with gift. art. This, this is definitely a gift, and then we just have to figure out how to monetize yes. what we have naturally, which, yeah. is, which is what, um, you know, people who are um, news anchors, they, right. they're using, they're monetizing what they do naturally. Right. Mm -hmm. So and it's just harder, I think, sometimes for artists. Or well, it, it was maybe in the past, but mm. social media makes that thing different. Well, yeah. I mean, I think, you're right. I think it's you're all right. about imagining, you know, we have three jobs that you can do. Mm -hmm. You can be a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, mm -hmm. right? And anything else is kind of weird, right? Yeah. So maybe like an engineer, okay, I know what that is. Mm -hmm. But when we start going down the list, people don't imagine all the possibilities for work. Mm -hmm. What is the nature of good work in the world? And so... Um, I think all of you are doing something to help also expand, and 21 Dreams is doing an amazing job of Absolutely. expanding the conception of what it means to do work. Mm. Um, and that takes on a lot of faces. Tony? Um, I can actually tie my story into everything that they have already <laughs> <laughs> mentioned. Yeah. Um, I like to uh, credit my dad mm. for introducing me to the art. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, uh, he would take us to the CAM, which is the California African American Museum um, in Los Angeles uh, on the weekends. Oh, wow. And I was exposed to black artists then because I was confused, like the graffiti on mm -hmm. the side of the road. I didn't realize that that was actually art mm -hmm. back then, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so the um, experience that he gave me and my sisters taking us to the museum to see introduced us to culture is right. what he was actually doing and seeing you know what these black artists were creating mm -hmm. and I would go home and you know color and coloring books and that was my thing you know I played with dolls and I, I colored and coloring books mm -hmm. um, and my aunt uh, she actually supported my coloring book uh, <laughs> 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 obsession <laughs> Because it was an opportunity for me to have my own. Mm -hmm. You know, I have three younger sisters, and uh, they would find them and scribble in them. Mm 
own. And mm. so I would have to hide them, you know. <laughs> um, but then as I got older, I was always drawing and doodling, but never knew that I could, again, make a career mm. out of it. So I went into education mm -hmm. and I hid my artist status behind my students. Wow. Mm. Because I wasn't, wow. I wasn't confident in mm -hmm. making a, a career, mm -hmm. just being the artist. Mm -hmm. And I'm still kind of hiding, you know, behind them, really not ready to, to let go and just, just do my art. Um, mm -hmm. What is this, my 16th year yeah. being an arts educator. Wow. You know, and just really, probably going on three years ago, I was at a 21 Dream uh, event mm -hmm. and it was the art walk mm -hmm. and I ran into an old principal Anthony Brock who said hey you know you still doing your art and I was like oh yeah you know every now and again he was like well I want you to meet somebody and I turned around and he was like this is Kevin King oh. <laughs> and I was like okay <laughs> he's like and this is Milton I was like hey <laughs> <laughs> and and that's how it all started you know yeah. just conversations with other artists yeah. and I think that's the common denominator right now is including yeah. yourself with an art community. Yes, absolutely. Finding like-minded people who will help build you up and, you know, kind of cultivate mm -hmm. what you have, mm -hmm. you know, where, wherever that is. And so since then, I've been painting ever since. I'm, wow. I'm doodling and, you know, just, I can't, stop mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's crazy i'm at a light and i have a piece of mail or something i picked up <laughs> and i got a pencil and i'm at the light and i'm not on my phone <laughs> i'm not on my right. phone at the red light like i'm i'm doing it because i have an idea in my head and i have to i have to get it out so it's like it's not going to stop. It's not going to mm. stop. It's, 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 it's not, not going to stop. And, and I think that's another common denominator in all of you that even though you tried to suppress or hide or say, oh, this is kind of strange, it came out anyway. Right. There, was, there was no getting rid of it. True. You had to be true to yourself. So I think that's a wonderful thing. So I want to I talk to you um, specifically about your art. And as I said before, your art in the exhibition certainly seems to be in conversation with each other. So much of it is in conversation. And you all paint strong women subjects, strong women subjects, um, among other things. And you all use color in a very provocative and evocative way. So I want you to talk about your um, use of color and how you use it to bring to light um, or to life wor uh, work and to sort of illustrate what I'm going to call the hidden emotional state of your subjects. And so um, let's start with um, Carol. Carol, you had one of your paintings is of a Victorian woman mm -hmm. and she is wearing this, she's beautiful and she's wearing this really strong, yellow dress, these are vibrant colors, and she seems to just come right off of that canvas at us. It's amazing. And so I want to talk about your use of color to evoke that kind of boldness that we see in her personality. Well, I, um, I work a lot from vintage photos. Mm -hmm. I love old pictures. When I was a little girl, my, I, I, as soon as I got to my great grandmother's house, I would take her shoebox of pictures out. <clears throat> and they were old pictures of her growing up, old pictures of my mom, and I fell in love with them. And so I work a lot from vintage photos, and, but I can't imagine that our life was just black and white, because you know, most of those pictures are black and white. And so I introduced color um, as a way of um, showing that they, they were more than just a black and white photo. Um, I, I've told, told this story a lot of times. When we would study um, um, antebellum period in school and stuff, all, and then even when we, sto when we studied the Roaring Twenties, mm -hmm. all of the people that we saw um, in the school books were white people. Mm -hmm. But I knew <laughs> that black people wore those flapper outfits and that black people wore those big gowns. And um, I was able to identify um, 
I was able to flip it in my mind to, to flip the history so that I know that we too, you know, black people dressed like that and we had those same things, you know, it was just not shown at school. And so I'm very, very drawn to um, the late 1800s and then the roaring 20s are my favorite um, time periods to create from and I do it in color. <laughs> I think that's a great, that's a great answer. Yeah. Okay, so Sunny, I'm I'm really interesting because interested because your work is very colorful, very colorful. It's 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 vibrant, it's interesting, it's evocative, and off, often the colors you use are unexpected, which I love. Thank <laughs> which you. I love. You you probably don't find them unexpected because it's out <laughs> of your head. But when you look at it, you go, yeah, that's that's right. That's right. Um, Thank you. And I'm thinking about, in particular, your portrait of Blaze. Yes. That's got that beautiful emerald green uh, background. Um, but that idea, that, and you go, yeah, uh, it's <laughs> not red, but yes, it's a Blaze. It's a blaze. <laughs> I get that. I get that. But so many of them, so many of them. So you want to talk about your use of color? Well, thank you. Um, I. I have to go back to exactly what you said about not being able to suppress yes. your, your, your gift, your, your artisticness. And, um, to me, uh, I, I just love the expressiveness of bold colors mm -hmm. and just, you know, it's in your face. But uh, I love that you brought up that painting in particular because um, that's Daniil who encouraged Tony <laughs> yeah. to be a part of the show, which is, which is a great, you know, full circle. But, um, but Daniil has taught me a great deal about art as well, but we talk about art being a fire within us mm -hmm. and um, how sometimes it just, just consumes you. And, um, you know, she, she's so bold and expressive herself that, that she often says she, you know, burns whatever she <laughs> Touches, but um, but to, to to sort of play on that art being a fire that consumes you, a blaze yes. was the title. It had to be. So, um, but I, I I think you you two can agree. Like, and Tony, you said you you're not going to be able to turn this off. Like, right. it's right. just something that you can't um, you know choose to have or not have. But right. uh, but. I, I just, I've always been attracted to bold colors um, from being in junior high and high school studying art and all the different time periods. It was always postmodernism and, oh, you know, yeah. expressionism mm -hmm. that always drew me in, mm -hmm. so. Tony, last word, colors. Your colors are, are more muted, mm -hmm. but they're still there and there's still some real emotional intensity behind mm -hmm. those colors. So talk to us about the colors. And I think I submitted three pieces for the show and two of them, the colors were a bit muted mm -hmm. and that tied into the portrait themselves. Yeah. Um, I feel like a lot of times when we choose the colors that we wear, not just to create in our art, it ties into the personality of the figure. Mm -hmm. And in those, I wanted to focus more so on the expression than the color. So um, they are a little bit softer mm -hmm. because the personality is a little bit softer but then the third piece that I chose was very bold yes. and had a, a red turtleneck on with red lips and you know for a lot of females when you put that red on you know that's <laughs> a, <laughs> you know you're trying to make a statement and so uh, I tie the the use of color in with the, the personalities of of the figures and I think it's it shines through I think mm -hmm. it always shines through in all of your work I want to thank you all for being with us this afternoon and talking about your art and talking particularly about who I am. And if you haven't seen it, you have an opportunity to see it virtually. It's amazing, wonderful, don't miss it. Thank you so much. On behalf of 21 uh, Dreams, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.